How about now? Hey, so nice to see you. <laughs> oh my goodness. We actually did it, guys. It was the third time. You need to... Third time was the charm. And you know what? Sometimes I was just saying, in life, sometimes it happens just like that, doesn't it? I know. And how are you? So nice to see you. I'm very happy. I'm doing super well. Even better now that I can see you and everything's working. I want to say a big thank you for joining for Win the Crown live segments. As you know, I'm starting a new season of Win the Crown for 2021, leading up to the Miss Universe pageant, the 70th Miss Universe pageant in Elliot, Israel. How oh excited God. are you to go to Israel? Yes, I'm <laughs> Well, I don't have my suitcase yet, but I think that my organization will help me with everything. And I'm super excited, you know, it's a dream to go to that country and to have a flight for, I don't know, probably 15 hours or something like that. So I'm super excited. I hope to see you there with my new crown. <laughs> Oh, gosh, I, it would be a dream for me to be there. I don't know if I'm even able to travel because right now restrictions in Thailand prevent me from traveling overseas and come back easily. But you never know what's going to happen by December. So, yes, I might I, see you there. Yes, Exciting. I, there, yes I'm super, super excited. Uh, we don't know exactly when it's going to be. We only know that it's going to be in December, but we are ready. We continue with the preparation. We continue with everything and we are almost there. Well, that's the best that you can do. Sometimes people tend to get so nervous and trying to control the outcome and try to control everything on the outside. But the reality is we have no control of our external circumstances. Isn't that right? Like today. So yeah, exactly. So what do we have control over? Yes. Inside. Every, yes, On everything. Inside. And you know what? I have a doubt because I don't see any comment. So I don't know if the people is watching the video right now. Did you know that? Well, I'm seeing a lot of comments and I'm seeing a lot of love coming through. Oh. <laughs> like Mexican okay. flags, butterflies. <laughs> Uh, hearts in blue, which is for you because you're wearing blue today. <laughs> uh, and we are with a lot of colors here. It's very amazing. Well, yeah, I'm not exactly. To move anything in my phone because everything is happening. So let's start in this way. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Let's do it. We do have a lot of requests and we already have a lot of questions coming in. So I'm definitely going to get to our fans' questions in a okay. little bit. But for now, let's talk about you and let's talk about your preparation. Now, first of all, this is what I want to know. This is my most important question. Is that when you were competing for your national title, for the national crown of Miss Universe Mexico, what do you think was the mindset and the difference that made you win? Why okay. do you think you won? What was that strong mindset that you said, ah, that's why I won? Well... I know that you are asking about my national competition, but I want to start with my state competition. I participated for the first time, and you know what? I lost. And I stayed in a way because I said, this is for me. This is something that I want to, to prove to the world about my voice, my message. And I continue being perseverant. So I continue preparing myself and I get designated by my state. So I had the opportunity to go to the national competition. And you know what? In my national competition, I lose again. But I- Whoa, lost. are you kidding? <laughs> no, I was, I am the first runner up. I was the first runner up. And the one who won is Andrea Mesa, that it's the, the new Miss Universe. And I'm very happy for her. I know that everyone has the correct time in life. And I always think that if something is for me, it's going to, to have the way and to the way to get into my, my life. But the thing here is that you need to work for it. You need to be persistent. You need to work for yourself. You need to still work in. It doesn't matter if you don't win the crown or if you win. And that's the thing that makes me the new <laughs> Miss Mexico. <laughs> okay, I'm so sorry. I didn't even realize that you were first runner-up to Andrea Mesa. 
um, I should have done a little bit more homework. I just kind of figured that they held a new pageant in Mexico and you were the next winner. So there was no pa no pageant for this year. No, no, because of the COVID, but I have yes. the fortune and I have the pleasure to be here. And I know that this is for something else, not only for no. going to first, but it's something that really changed my life. And it's something that I'm enjoying a lot. So you're probably one of the best people in the world to ask, you know, when, when you don't get what you want and when you don't win something that you really want, there's always something that might better come out of that later on. Yes. And of course, not everyone who became first runner up will get a chance to go to Miss Universe and become the current title holder. Like for instance, Miss Canada, who you're going to meet, Tamara. Uh, she also was the first runner up to Nova Stevens last year in Miss Universe Canada 2020. Um, and then she ended up being crowned as the new Miss Universe Canada because there was no pageant this year. So, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you get to go to Miss Universe. It doesn't matter if you get to wear that national crown or not. The point is that if you follow your heart, if you follow your intuition that tells you, I need to be here. I, I know that I need to try again. I know that I need to stay the course. Then it's going to lead you somewhere where it's going to be great for you in the end anyway. Right? Yeah. No, and you need to be very perseverant because of course, uh, sometimes the things doesn't happen as you want. So you need to be a dreamer. I consider myself as a dreamer woman. And I love to have always something to work for it. And that is something that is happening for me now that I have the title, the crown. I'm super excited and super grateful with the national uh, organization from Mexico because now I am going to be, to be and to go to Miss Universe, but first yes. to go to and you know what? It's something that I have been waiting for most of my life. This is a dream that I have been working and working and working. And not because I want to be recognized as the most beautiful, because I am not. And I don't have the best body and I don't have the best everything. But I know about... Girl, the... you crazy? What are you talking I'm... about? You're gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you. But you know what? I don't want uh, the people to see my eyes or my mouth. I want the people to see my heart and the things that I want to say to the world. I I love to make uh, like social causes, social projects, because uh, well, when I was a little girl, my dad introduced myself to all these things, and it's something that I made by my heart because it's something that connected me with my family and it's a message that i know probably i'm i'm going to another question <laughs> but it's a message okay. nowadays that we need to be more connected i see all the things that you post on your instagram and i see that you are very familiar and you love your your kids your everything and that is the most important thing to enjoy your family and to know about the values of the family. It's very important. Yes, yes, you're absolutely right. And we're going to get to your incredible message and your platform that you're going to be promoting as part of your years with Miss Universe Mexico. I just wanted to touch on quickly to something that you said before. When you didn't win your nation, uh, your state, when you're mm -hmm. your state pageant, there was something inside of you, like some kind of, maybe your heart was speaking to you or you felt like I need to try again. And sometimes logically it might not even make sense, right? But something inside of you says, I have to try again and you just do it. And then in, in those moments, I think that is when you know your heart is speaking because you don't, you can't even explain it. You don't even know why you're doing it, but you are doing it anyway. It's like, you're possessed and you're walking forward and trying to go for something that you know might not even ever happen, right? But I think that's when you know you're on the right path, when things don't make sense, but you're doing it anyway. <laughs> yes, actually, 
I lose uh, the first time in my state competition. Um, I don't know, like two months later, I had a problem, uh, an issue about my thyroid. And it was something that I said, okay, I am going to quit about the beauty pageants because this is not for me. I suffered Hashimoto syndrome and hypothyroidism. So that's why I was like, okay, this is not for me. I am going to continue my life without going to Miss Universe. But then I realized that I had a power message to all the women from all over the world that they can continue with their dreams. It doesn't matter if they have an illness because I continue taking medicine every day and the people see me with a lot of energy and they ask me, hey, how do you do that if you have hypothyroidism? And I said, you know what? My dreams are stronger than my illness. And I am here for something. And I know that I can inspire a lot of people over the world that they can continue being just a normal person, not just a normal people in the world, just trying to follow their dreams. And that's why I stayed in the state competition. And I was like, okay, let's go again. I have a message and I see it like a platform. Like the doctor see probably the best hospital as a platform. Well, I want to see Miss Universe as a platform and I want to try again. And that's yes. why I'm because I lose that fear and I say, okay, I can with this. I have to give you a big round of applause uh -huh. A big, you know, hands up in the air yeah. and a big trophy, a big mental trophy, because that is so inspirational, Deborah. I really, really love to hear stories like that because your illnesses, they don't define you. You have them, but they're not who you are. And so you are the living example of somebody who is really going for their dreams and doing things despite all of the obstacles and blockages and whatever your mind can tell you. Oh, but I have an illness. Oh, I can't do it. You're like, no, I can, right? So it's all a mental game. At the end of the day, it's a mental game. And if you have the strongest mindset and the strongest, as you say, perseverance, right? Then you are going to be the one on top, living your life as a winner. And I don't just mean wearing the crown. I just mean being a winner in life. Yes. Right. yes, I feel winner in life because I hear a lot of women that they ask me about my problems. They ask me about how do I deal with. And I said, oh, my God, they saw me as an inspiration for their life because I am going to be very um, with it. I am going to talk with the truth. When I had this problem, I saw on the Internet that the only person in the world that has this Hashimoto syndrome was Bella Hadid, that she was a model of Victoria's Secret. And I was like, okay, I, I'm not going to have a message of Victoria of Bella Hadid, like asking something. And now that I'm just a normal person trying to be Miss Universe, I said, okay, I can be an inspiration. And I want to talk about my problem because I know that there are people that wants to hear about the story and wants to hear about how the, uh, did I deal with. Wow. Wow. This is really, I'm getting chills and goosebumps on my body right now because to think that we sometimes complain about so many things and some of us are perfectly healthy and we have all of these opportunities and yet we complain and make up excuses of why we can't do things. And then here's somebody like you who's actually struggling and it's a real illness that you have to live with every single day and you are doing things that other people give themselves excuses they can't, right? So once again bravo 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 incredible and you're getting so much love right now in the comments and, and people are just saying that comment but i don't want to try anything in my phone but i can't see anything so thank you everyone <laughs> thank you yes. I don't see and yes thank you everybody for your love and your support well, now that we already, we pretty much have covered that already, the message that you, you are sharing with the world is exactly that. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening right now, do not let your outside circumstances or your illnesses or any you know, problems that you think you have 
define you, right? Move past those obstacles because it's just a mental game. If you know that you want something, believe that it's possible and just go for it regardless of all the fears, regardless of all the doubts. And, you know, here's Deborah, a living example of that. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, now I have another question for you. And the question is, what role does spirituality and energy work play into your preparation for Miss Universe? As you know, uh, and most of the viewers probably have heard me talking about this, how important energetical preparation is for pageants, right? Because we don't just want to focus on the physical and the mental preparation. We also want to incorporate the energetic one because that makes us, you know, a holistic, holistically prepared person, right? Three elements, body, mind, spirit, right? The energy, the spirit, soul, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so what is it for you that you think is helping you and how are you incorporating that energetic component into your preparation? Oh my God. I, I think that's one of the most important things because you need to be strong by your mind because your mind is the one that controls everything. Uh, if you're going to go to an English class, to a runway class, you decided to go to that class. And what decides is your mind and your heart. So you need to be connected. You need to know who you are. You need to know what are your goals, your achieves. And that's why you are working. I love to do yoga because it is an activity and an exercise that helped me connecting everything in my body, inside me. Because in the real life, <laughs> in the normal life, we have a lot of distractions like the cell phone, the probably the kids or family or dogs and everything. And we can say, okay, I, I'm connected here, but we are hearing everything, like a lot of voices. And that's why I believe that we need to have a moment. I'm not saying that you need to do yoga, but you need to have a moment with yourself and you need to think about everything, your breathing, um, your blood, and everything that is happening inside you. Because we, we go to the gym, we do exercise, we eat healthy, but sometimes we forget that we are humans, we are energy, and we need to know how to control ourselves, but inside. Yes, yes. And that's something interesting that you said that you don't have to do yoga. You don't have to do meditation if that's not what you're into. But pick something that you can do for yourself or you can process your internal emotions when you can be alone with your thoughts so you can observe your thoughts. And in that way, you're going to you know, discover the depth of who you are. And it could be anything. It could be going for a long walk on the beach by yourself, right? And one of my friends is actually, she says for her, it's massage. She gets massaged twice uh, a week, <laughs> you know, like in Thailand, this is what we do. We get massages. <laughs> I'm sure in Mexico, there's lots of massage places as well. Yes. I know a friend that she said, oh my God, going to Walmart, it's like distract mm -hmm. myself and just thinking. And that's what you said, that you need to find the activity that makes you feel good with yourself and just like to think and to think about everything that is happening right the only a piece of warning that i have to say is that do not find an activity that distracts you from your thoughts but actually makes you face up to your thoughts where you are alone and you can't escape because watching tv and you know netflix and all of that it's not going to help you because you're just going to be distracting and turning away from it or, you know, some people say, well, I like to go out with my friends and dance and drink and, you know, party. But that's, again, that's suppressing your emotions. That's suppressing what, what is happening to you right now. So try to find an activity where you can be alone, preferably, and an activity where you can really not have an escape strategy, right? Where you can't escape being faced up to your demons sometimes, right? To those the darkness inside of you as well, because the only way to overcome the darkness is, of course, to just bring it up to the light of your awareness. So that is beautiful, beautiful. And so you do like to do yoga. So that yes. means we have that in common. <laughs> yes, I love to do yoga. And you know what? Something that you say, it is very true. 
I moved to Mexico City because I'm from Sinaloa, to Los Mochis, from Los Mochis. And I moved here three months ago. And at the first, I was very sad because I used to talk with my family and see my dog and go for a walk. And I have three sisters, so I was talking with them every day. And when I arrived to Mexico City and the first days that I was alone and I was like, oh my God, I can't with this. This is something that I can't because my mind, we're talking every day, like all the day we're talking like, you can, yeah. no, and yes, you are going to deal with this. No, you need to return to Los Mochis. And I was like, something like a work in my mind. But I, ha I went with the psychologist, of course, and I start with my activities and I get concentrated about the thing that I want to, to make Miss Universe, of course. And it passes like two or three weeks and I feel very well alone. I was like, oh my God, I feel well being alone. I can talk with myself. I can be in my house all the day without crying. Wow saying that I can and that it's something that you need to work with your energy with your spiritually and meditation it's not only about close your eyes sometimes it's something that you need to work with your mind and it's very yeah. important wow I'm really impressed because just a few weeks and you were able to overcome this incredibly challenging mentally challenging time and where a lot of people would have crumbled and kind of just you know imploded or ran back home or done something else to distract themselves like drinking or you know drugs or whatever right yes. but you really you you took the <laughs> charge there so yes. can i ask you you mentioned you you seek some help you have yes. had someone help you which is totally fine by the way the, there's no shame in asking for help there's no shame in going to a psych psychiatrist or you know seeking psychological help isn't it Yes, yeah, of course. It's something very normal that if we know that we have a help, we need to go for a help. I went with a psychologist. Actually, uh, it's the psychologist of the organization, the national organization. So she asked me, hey, do you want to go to Miss Universe? Yes, I want. Okay, this is a dream that you were looking for a long of time ago. And now that you are living in Mexico City, like it's a, a big city because I came from a small city. And she told me, okay, you need to concentrate about your goal and you need to think about the positive things that you have. When you are walking in the, in the streets, what do you think? And I said, okay, when I was walking, uh, because I walk from my house to the gym, I just think like, oh, this is very big and this is not enough. And I was like, only negative things. And she told me, okay, you need to start thinking in the positive way. Oh, look at that tree, look at that cloud, everything, it's beautiful. And I start changing my own thinkings, my own thoughts. And that's why I started seeing everything like, okay, this is the city of my dreams. And this is something that I was looking for a long of time ago. And now that I am mm -hmm. having this and all this opportunity, I need to, to know that I am working for it. And I yeah. felt well. But everything wow. is in the mind. <laughs> everything is in the mind. You're right. And so it's interesting how she made you have that perspective shift, right? It's almost like changing the lens on your camera or a filter through which you're looking at. And then all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, I can look at it from a negative or I have this opportunity to look at it from the positive. And every single situation, everything that happens in our life can be looked at so many different perspectives. Right. Yeah. So try to find the one that suits you, the one that helps you, the one that encourages you and pushes you towards your dreams instead of pushing you away. Um, and so that's that's awesome. So that's one way to overcome um, difficult moments. But at the, also, don't you find that being present just like by breathing and focusing on the presence of your body, that also kind of takes away all the problems, because as long as you're breathing, there is no problem, right? Yes, the problem I'm, would be if you're not breathing. That's a big problem. <laughs> yes, I know. Everything is in the breathing. That's why I love to do yoga because I can control. The first uh, classes that I went, I remember that I 
cool them with my breath because I was like, like I can't with this. It's very difficult. Mm -hmm. But during the classes, during the time fly, the time flies when I went with the to the my classes, and my breath was very good. And now when I have a problem, I'm like, okay, I need to breathe. I need to concentrate. I need to connect everything inside my body. And then you can say anything to the world, you know, and it's the same with the nervous. Um, I am going to <laughs> to be very sincerely with you. When you asked me about the life, I was like, I don't know. I don't know if I am ready for it. I was like very nervous because look at you, you're Miss Universe 2005 and you are like very empowering woman and you talk with a lot of people from all over the world. And I said, oh my God, Natalie asked me because I'm important and I'm a person and I know that I have a message. And that, that's why I think that, yes, I can with this. I can, it doesn't matter if my English is not perfect, if my communication is not too well, but I feel it's ready. Perfect. <laughs> I thank you, yes. Well, I appreciate you saying that, but you know, it's when people say, oh, well, you are Miss Universe. And I said, well, you could be my universe sister. You never know. And actually, I do consider all of the pageant girls, even the ones that I train and that come to me to my master classes, I consider them like my little sisters. You know, uh -huh. They're the ones that are also carrying on that the torch for the young generation, passing on their messages, inspiring other people in their footsteps. So, you know, whether you have a national or international title, it, ma it matters very little in the grand yeah. scheme of things. The main thing is that how many people can you inspire? How many lives can you change as a result of you being out there in a the public spotlight, right? Yeah. And here you are inspiring millions of people with um, your story and your courage and everything that you're doing right now to pursue your goals. All right. So let's talk quickly about, uh, well, actually there's a few questions that people have submitted and let's do it very quickly, like a um, lightning round kind of thing. So okay. you don't have to go into details, uh, so. but <laughs> yeah, very quickly. Okay. So question number one, do you consider yourself a fulfilled woman? Yes. Yes, I, I can deal with everything if I have my goal very uh, structured. Perfect. Do you prefer to be smart or beautiful? Smart, because if you are smart, you are going to see to everyone beautiful. That's true. Or why not both, right? Why do we always have to choose? Some people yes. say you can only be smart or beautiful. We say you can be both. And here's example A. <laughs> In example B. <laughs> oh, thank you. Okay. What makes you proud to be a woman? It makes me proud to be perseverant and to have my female energy. I think it's something that I can change. And I love to be a woman. <laughs> no, me too. I love to be a woman too. <laughs> it's not to say that being a man is worse, but... We are who we are, so we need to own it. <laughs> what is your message to the universe? I want to connect people, not as devices, but the human contact. I think that we forget the, the people that have a, an illness, the autism, children's, the communities that are not too far from our states or, or cities. And we need to connect each other. I think that it's very something very powerful. And nowadays that we had the COVID and we have the confinement, I will, I know that the people separate because we were very afraid of the virus. But I believe that we are stronger than a virus, and we need to to keep in mind that we need to connect each other and we need to help mm. us. Right, that's so important, Not, never to lose that human connection. Yes. That's a beautiful message. I wonder if you're a water element. You're gonna have to do my quiz, my element quiz. I'll send, yeah. I'll send you the quiz. Okay. And yes, and everyone who's watching, you can also do the quiz. I think you can just go into the 
link in my bio. But anyway, I'll, I'll make sure that everyone sees where to do this quiz. Okay. I'm the blue element. <laughs> Probably I'm the water element. Yeah, because it's, it seems like when a water element are the ones that want to talk about that unity, that human connection, the one, you know, the connection that we're all one at the core of our beings, right? Oh, okay. So that's, I wonder if that's who you are as a, yeah. I'm, a, I'm also a water sign. Oh, okay. I am going to ask for the test when we finish because I want to know who I am. It's, it's just a fun little quiz. It's, it's not really serious, but it's like for fun. <laughs> okay. But I always like to define myself and my, my clients, my students, who they are, because it helps them to create their presentation and how they're going to show up as a brand on the Miss Universe stage or on the pageant. It sounds interesting. I never hear about it, but I want to, to try it. Okay, I'll send you the link to the quiz and also the ebook that's called Tune okay. Into Your Element. Okay. So you can read about your, your elements, if you're water, if you're fire, earth, or air. Um, yeah, very cool. And all of you who would like to get it, it's also on my website, natalieglibova.com. You just click on it and then you can find the link to the ebook. Okay, a mm, uh, couple of more. What is the quality that defines you as a person? I'm very perseverance. Very... <laughs> that's the word. Yes, that's the word that defines me. I'm very perseverant. And even though the life says no, I was like, why no? I am going to try again. I can with this. I can deal with this. And that's yeah. why I'm trying again and trying and trying. And that is something that I love about myself. And we need to recognize because sometimes they say, oh, don't say something beautiful about yourself. But I think in the opposite way, you need to talk beautiful about yourself because if you don't, then who? Yes, that's right. Until you love yourself deeply, no one else is going to see that and no one else is going to love you. So it's perfect. It all starts from within. And I can vouch for that after having spoken to you that you're definitely perseverant, the resilience, <laughs> right? One of the qualities in my book, uh, I'm winning is actually resilience. So resilience. I have seven qualities that all winners have. And one of them is resilience. Yes, I hear about that word, everything with you, like you always say about the resilient and the importance of um, continue in the life it doesn't matter what and that is something very powerful yes it, it really is uh, what is a quote that always keeps you going one of your powerful quotes or maybe something that you heard or a philosophy that you live by or somebody told you something and you're like yes I love that quote um you made me think because I know a quote about the butterfly. I love the butterfly because uh, the ah, Is that why they're all sending butterflies uh, in the comments? I don't see the comments, but yes, because the thyroid has the form of the butterfly. And I had a surgery and they um, kit the, the middle of my thyroid. So I'm a butterfly with one wing, but I'm still, oh, that's so yes. Cute. Yes, but it's very, oh very, um, okay. The quote that I love, it says, perhaps the butterfly is proof that you can go through a great deal of darkness and it still becomes something beautiful. Oh my God. You just killed me with that. That is so yeah, cool. I love that quote. Because it's about the butterfly, the life, being perseverant, being resilient and having some hope. Having yes. faith that it's all going to turn out, be, even though you don't know. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I love that quote. I, uh, this is my gift oh my for God. you. <laughs> oh, guys, are you, I mean, I'm tearing up over here. Like, seriously, this is so, so special and so beautiful. And I also think it's so brilliant how you were able to take a dark moment in your life and turn it into something so beautiful and inspirational that is now kind of like your symbol and it's a it's your brand i mean butterfly like now you are your fans and your support network and your community they're all like butterflies you know and they're all saying like yeah we want to be like you and we want to support you and we want to also 
become butterflies ourselves because it's, and, it's inspiration. And so, uh, it is because my butterfly doesn't know how to fly because it doesn't have a wing. So it, I only have a wing. And it was because my doctor said that when I was, when I wanted to be like have my surgery. And in that moment I said, okay, I can, I can fly so I can go through my dreams. I can go to Miss Universe. I can go uh, to be a model. I can go to anything because I can't fly. But then I realized that if you had a dream, you can go walking, running, swimming, climbing, in whatever way you want. But you can go, wow. you know. You don't need to fly to get into your dreams. And that's why I love the butterfly. And I say that I am a butterfly with one wing, but I'm still on my way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Again, a butterfly does not get defined by her wings or how many wings she has. She's still on the inside a butterfly so 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 beautiful oh my goodness deborah well done well done and thank you all of you guys for sending in your beautiful butterflies and the blue oh. hearts and they were writing Mex mexico with the x with the butterfly Isn't oh that my cute? god that is very cute thank you for saying that it's because i can still see the messages Hopefully I can, because probably if I read it, probably in this moment I will be crying, but thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. well, I'm going to save this video. So guys, please go back to when this video is live on my feed, uh, when it's posted on my feed and leave your comments of love and support for Deborah. Uh, yeah. So she can see all of your beautiful stuff. But I'm telling you right now, I'm just watching this and it's just like butterflies, butterflies, butterflies. <laughs> like, like, it's crazy. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Crowns, crowns and butterflies. <laughs> I'm going to say this in Spanish to my people from Please. Mexico. Uh, chicos, yo ahorita no puedo leer los comentarios. Está fallando un poco eh, la conexión, pero no le quiero mover. Cuando Natalie grabe el video en vivo en su perfil, por favor vayan y comenten todas las mariposas, todas las coronas, porque va a ser muy especial para mí poderlo ver. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Yes, yes. Muchas gracias, everybody. It's so beautiful. Okay, a couple of more things. Um, uh, how does it feel to be going in the footsteps of Andrea Meza? <laughs> My God, Andrea Meza is a very intelligent woman and it's very determined. And I love to be in her generation in Mexico because as I said in the first, I lost with the Miss Universe. So, you know, it's like I'm the first runner up, but the one that have the crown is now the Miss Universe. So I know that she's very intelligent and she's doing a great job with the Miss Universe organization. I know that they love her. And I, I hear a lot of things about Andrea Mesa, like advices and everything. And what she tell me, it's always to be myself and always enjoy the things that are in front of me and that it's something very special. Mm, wow. You must be so proud to see yes. a fellow Mexican woman to yes. do so well. Yeah. I had 10 years without a Miss Universe. And now that we have a Miss Universe and the eyes of the universe are in Mexico, it's something very powerful that we can continue growing with the tourism, with the economy and everything that can help our country. And that is something that makes me feel very proud. It doesn't matter that Andrea only had six months, but that's why I am working a lot because yeah. I work at a tourism ambassador of Mexico and I want to continue with that trying to uh, to keep more tourism to Mexico because the economy nowadays is not too well well I think in in all the world but I know that we have a lot of things here like our cultural beaches or traditions that mm -hmm. the people love so I know that Mexico needs <laughs> to continue in the eyes of the Miss Universe Viva Mexico! <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Yes. Okay. Um, one more. There's an 18-year-old girl. Her name is Saum Saumia, I think. <laughs> and she's asking, if I'm 18 years old, how to prepare for pageants on our own 
and which things to focus on. So this is someone who's obviously just new to pageants, very young, doesn't have much to much support, right? There, she's on her own. What advice would you give? Well, this message is for Saumia and all the girls that wants to try this, well, the teenagers. I believe that if you want to enter to a beauty pageant, you need to have a message. You are not going only to enter just because someone told you that you are beautiful. You need to be here because you see it as a platform to grow up in the personal and in the professional way. You need to have something that the judges say, okay, you are going to be because you are something that we are looking for. Sorry for my dog. It's because <laughs> probably saw a dog uh, crossing the, the street That's or okay. something. <laughs> and if that if your message is powerful, if, if you have something to share, a story or something that can inspire women or people from all over the world, then you can enter. But if you want to enter just because someone told you that you are beautiful, it is not a good idea. You need to work for it because this is a work. It's not a hobby. Well, of course, you distract yourself in the photo shoots. You go to events. You go to to a lot of things like uh, trips and everything. But this is a work. And if you are going to be here, it's because you have a message and you have a voice to talk about it in every event. Mm, wow. I, I have to say, if this was a final answer or a question in an interview, you just won the crown, girl. I really. Deborah, that was a fantastic answer. And I think anybody who's listening right now, who's young and experienced and is looking up to us beauty queens, this is a perfect way to say it. That it's not just that, oh, for me to feel like I'm the most beautiful woman in the land and I get to wear that crown and I get to take my selfies. You know, you really, you need to get your priorities straight. If you have something to share with the world and you know that you have been through difficulties, you, you know, you need to say that. You need to be confident. You need to be courageous to lead by example and teach other people who are going to be following in your footsteps, right? So it's like a circle. It's a, it's a cycle. Isn't yeah. It? <laughs> okay. Well, uh okay last last question is actually are you allowed to talk about your national costume so, uh, yeah. carlos it wants to find out what will be your typical costume okay its name is mexicana mujer azteca mujer azteca is the name and okay let's talk a little bit about it but not to be uh something that you can imagine <laughs> the colors are green purple and brown and it's very very beautiful that's it <laughs> okay i was kind of almost expecting you to say you're gonna have wings like a butterfly behind you <laughs> I wanted to, and actually, I am going to send you a picture about myself with the national competition when I participated in the national, uh, yeah, in the national competition. Contest. It was about the butterfly, and it was amazing. Actually, it was really, really amazing. But it, it make it was very heavy to get into Israel. You know, it was like thirty kilos or something like that. I, I don't know if it was like. 60 pounds probably <laughs> and yeah that's why we discover another uh, national costume that it's very beautiful and it talks about the history of mexico right. and it's really amazing too but you okay. know what my butterfly it doesn't matter that i don't have the national competition it's going to be with me every single day so exactly exactly and you are the living embodiment of that <laughs> kind of symbolic butterfly that for everybody. So even no matter what, you're on stage, people already feel that butterfly oh, yeah. symbolism and the message that you are there to share. So it doesn't matter if you're going to be with the wings or not. The wings are already part of you. <laughs> oh, that's very cute. Thank you. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. Well, these are all the questions that I have for now, but I just want to leave maybe room for one question from you to me since... We kind of lost a bunch of time, but maybe at least I can give you some tips and some 
advice for competing at Miss Universe. So go ahead and ask me anything and I'll do my best to answer. Okay, Natalie, let's go. It's my turn. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, well, I hear a lot of questions by yourself, like people ask you, like, what do you feel when you win Miss Universe? And I think that it's something that we all know. So I want to ask you something different because I want to know this answer. Um, well, you win like a lot of years ago. And why do you continue empowering women? It doesn't matter that you don't have the crown of this year, but you have the crown in your hair every single year and you continue with the preparation of the girls and you continue giving us advices and tips and everything. And that is something that I, I don't know, I, I always say, why Natalie continue with this? What is the thing, the power that she has inside that she wants to continue preparing girls and empowering mm -hmm. women. So that's my <laughs> question. What is your motivation? Wow. This is a very deep, deep question that is not uh, easy to answer in one sentence for sure. Uh, and thank you very much for asking that because I think it is important for me to state that. In general, I think that it's not really the pageants and the contestants that really make me want to continue being in this world of pageantry. It's actually young women and women who are, who have so many big dreams beyond the crown. So for me, it's really about empowering young women to be winners in life because I know that they all have what it takes And if some of them just, you know, believe a little bit more or work a little bit harder or shift their perspective, they're going to do such amazing things. And for me to be part of that, well, that's just a way for me to also increase my energy and bring joy to my life. Because, yes, I can be joyful for all the happiness in my own life. But if I can tune into the joy of other people, that's like extra, double and triple and quadruple the joy that I can experience. So... My mission, I really made it my mission and my purpose in life is to see all the women and men, of course, but specifically in this, my demographic and in my audience is mostly women. I want to see them winning in life and in love, right? So it's just because I feel that I am winning in life and in love and that joy that I have, the satisfaction, the fulfillment, the pride that I get from feeling like a winner in life and in love, I want to say, you can have it too, all of you, every single person. So if I can just help in some way to let the people and the women win in life and in love, then that brings extra joy to me. And it's kind of like I'm fulfilling my purpose as I'm moving along in life, right? I'm not just living for myself. I'm also leaving that trail behind me. That's hopefully can inspire and motivate. Yes, yeah. that's a beautiful answer. And hopefully you have your purpose in life because you know what? You know about your skills, you know about your power and that's why you are working in your purpose. And that is something very powerful and something very interesting that you say that you can uh, make a lot of Miss Universe, but you can make them win in life. Because only, just imagine, only one woman from all over the world win Miss Universe in a year. So uh, it's, um, it's something, obviously, that not everyone could, can be Miss Universe. Sure. But are looking for being happy in their lives, it doesn't matter what. And that is yeah. something very powerful. I, I admire you. I respect you. And everything is very, very beautiful. Thank you, Deborah. Really nice to hear. I appreciate so much your kind words. And yes, you're right. You're right. Only one woman can win the crown and each year in each competition. But it means so little in the grand scheme of things because at the, at the end of the day, all the women who participated have brought something to, yes. to the competition. They've left their trails. They've left their marks. They've you know, left the legacy, 
right? So it's so beautiful to see when a person who doesn't win says to everybody, but I am a winner, not yeah. with the crown, but I am still a winner. And that brings so much joy to my heart. And I want to continue to do that for as long as I possibly can, for as long as I live. And that is my legacy. <laughs> wow, you are a winner in life. That is very true. Congrats. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, sweetie. All right. Well, I think it's almost time to go because I actually have a yoga class to get to and I don't want to miss my yoga experience, you know, getting all balanced and centered. I notice that when I do yoga consistently on a daily basis, at least three times a week, my life kind of, you know, because of, of the inner balance, the outer balance comes in as well. So I'm sure that you feel the same way about your yoga practice. And yes, I love to do yoga. Hopefully you have a great class tonight thank you so much and you have a wonderful winning day because it's morning oh no sorry night i'm night. morning <laughs> yes you're in the night <laughs> have a winning night and have a good sleep get some rest and you are doing amazingly well deborah i have to say you're working so so hard everyone can see that and i know that when you're standing on that stage in december in israel you're gonna have no regrets you're gonna feel like you're the most prepared contestant because that's one of the secrets actually of how to win is to be one of the most prepared contestants. And I know you will feel like that. So oh, thank you. keep Not it up, keep it up. Yes, thank and you. And I'll be, I'll be watching yeah. whether live from Israel or from my you know, computer, somehow I'll be with you in spirit. Thank and you. Mexico is with you in spirit all thank the way. Just a last thing from the people from Mexico. I'm going to ask them for a picture so if we can smile. Um, alguien de México que me haga el favor de tomar una foto y me la pasa. Ya saben. One, two. <laughs> There you go. Okay. Hey, Natalie, you are an amazing... I hope that you all got a chance to take that beautiful screenshot. It's going to be yes. legendary. It's going to go down in history. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you meet you soon in person have a great night hope so too thank you have a good night have a good morning to everyone who's tuning in from asia thank you for tuning in thank you for sending your love your butterflies your hearts and your crowns and everything else and we are definitely i'm going to be back with more win the crown live segments with other contestants deborah she's going to be back doing her thing on her instagram so if you're not yet following her which i'm sure most of you already are but please give her a follow and if you're not yet following me please do give me a follow as well because i'm going to bring you more tips on how to win in life and in love and of course how to win the crown so take care everyone lots of love lots of kisses lots of love around the world and bye, bye.